to destroy the works of the evil one and the kingdom of darkness with light and to rescue men from the law of sin this is the gospel of christ to proclaim good news unto the poor the gospel of christ spreading the soul-saving message of jesus and now ben bailey this is the gospel of christ for this reason a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife and the two shall become one flesh. We welcome you today to our study of godly homes in an ungodly world. In a day and age where the home is being threatened and attacked on every avenue, we want today to offer help and hope to the godly home to know that it can maintain its faithfulness, its integrity, and that it can be a home that's going to bring honor and glory to Almighty God. And so we're so glad that you joined us for our series of lessons on godly homes in an ungodly world. As always, we want you to know that today's lessons are being brought to you by members and congregations of the Church of Christ in your area. The Lord's Church would love for you to stop by and visit their assembly. You could visit them on Sunday morning or Sunday night or Wednesday night for Bible study. They'd be more than happy to have you and you would truly be an honored guest. If you've got questions about the church, maybe about the plan of salvation or, or the home or any issue, you'll find people there who'd be happy to sit down and discuss the Word of God with you and be kind in every way to help you know the Word of God better. And friend, here at the Gospel of Christ, we'd also love to help you in your study of the Word of God. Check out our website, thegospelofchrist.com. From there, you can find all our materials in both video, audio, and written format. If you'd like to have a copy of this series on godly homes in an ungodly world, it's available free online, or if you need a DVD or a CD, we'd be happy to mail that to you. And friend, if you've got a question, religiously, spiritually speaking, that we can help you with, please write to us or call us or email us. We'd be glad to visit with you about that. And as always, for those especially who are using smartphones, we encourage you to check out our app, both from the Android and the uh, Apple Play Store. Those are free and you can get that and it's a great way to study the Word of God on the go. Our homes today are facing a, a host of challenges. I believe it was Michael J. Fox who said, family is, just not, is not just an important thing, it's everything. And as a child of God, we believe God put the family there to help and encourage us in each and every way. And so today we want to consider what are some challenges that our homes are facing and what can we do from the Word of God to help with those challenges. And friend, I understand it's a challenging time in our world right now. There's so much disease, there's so much sin and sickness, and, and there's so much chaos and, and fighting in our, our homes ought to be a refuge and a sanctuary from all of that. But too many times the, the world and sin and Satan kind of bleeds over into the home. What can we do to keep the home, that safe place, that God intended. Let's consider what are some challenges to the Christian home. Friend, the first challenge that the home is facing is this. One of the greatest challenges to the Christian home is worldliness. Friend, our homes ought to be a place. What's the home designed for? God gave us the home to help one another get to heaven. And our homes truly ought to be a safe haven. Uh, Psalm 127 verse 1, Unless the Lord builds the house, they labor in vain who build it. Our homes ought to be a place where God is glorified and people are encouraged and uplifted to live the Christian life. And yet, one of the greatest challenges to the Christian home is worldliness. We're to be different than the world. Christians are called out of the world. God says, come out from among them 
and be ye separate, says the Lord. 2 Corinthians 6, verse 17 and 18. And yet too many times in our homes, the world infiltrates it. You see, God doesn't want us to live like and talk like and act like the wicked world. We want to keep that out of the home. James 4, verse 4, James says this. It's some of the strongest language in the Bible. Adulterers and adulteresses, do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with God? Whoever therefore desires to be a friend of the world makes himself God's enemy. Our homes need to be separate from the wickedness and the world and the sin that's often found in it. And friend, here's the reason why. The world, the sin, the evil that's in it, that's not going to stand the test of time. The Bible says, do not love the world or all that is in the world. For all that is in the world, lust of flesh, lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. It's not of the Father, but it's of the wicked one. And the world and all that's in it is passing away. In our home, we want to remember we don't act like the world. We don't talk like the world. We don't dress like. We don't, we don't treat others like the world treats other people. We, our goals, our ideals are so much different than that. The, the music, the, the programs that we watch, the, the things that we're entertained by, we want those to be godly and uplifting and not to let the world infiltrate our home and shape us into its mold. Then, friend, there's another challenge that our homes face today, and it's this. Christian homes are in desperate need of godly role models. I want you to take your Bible, and if you don't have your Bible, I want to encourage you to get that for just a moment. I want you to take your Bible, and I want you to look with me at a, a great passage about what it is that's going to make the home such a good place to grow spiritually in. Open your Bible to Joshua, the Old Testament book of Joshua, chapter 24, and I want you to notice what the Scripture says in Joshua 24, Verse number 15, when I think about the home and, and what Christians can do in the home to make it a good place and, and really some of the challenges we have, Joshua 24, 15 is such a banner for the home. The scripture says this, And if it seems evil to you to serve the Lord, listen to this, Choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve, whether the gods which your fathers served, which were on the other side of the river, or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. But then Joshua stands up so boldly and says, But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Friend, we need mothers and fathers. We need grandparents. We need godly role models in the home who are like Joshua going to say, In this house, we're going to serve God and we're going to put Him first. We're not going to talk that way. We're not going to act that way. We're going to bring honor and glory to God. And this home is going to put God and His principles first in every way. You see, that's what parents are supposed to do. Fathers, do not provoke your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. Our homes ought to be a a place, a secure place where children, where father and mother, where husbands and wives can flourish spiritually and we can put God and His truth in our hearts and lives every day. And so a great challenge to the home and, and especially parents. I want you to listen real carefully. We need you. God needs you. The home needs you to be the kind of role model that you ought to be. Your children People in our communities, they're watching us in the home. We are setting the standard for what is right and what is wrong. And by our actions and by our attitudes, we are giving examples to how we ought to live. Our children and our grandchildren, they need us to be a godly role model to follow in each and every way. And then, my friend, let's think about another challenge that's facing the home today. Every Christian home has to readjust its time to make sure we're giving God the best in everything that we have. You know, it seems like from the moment you wake up 
to the moment you go to bed. Some days it's as though we don't have enough time to do anything, it seems like. And, and everything is pulling at us. Everything is trying to get our time from us. And, and we're just stretched so thin in so many ways. Friends, sometimes we've just got to slow down and readjust our time. What really matters? Where do I need to put my time and my effort? And friend, I've got to readjust and uh, recalibrate my time because I don't have that much of it, right? James says this. In James chapter 4, verse number 14, James says, What is your life? It's but a vapor that appears for a little while and then it vanishes away. That word vapor, it, it was used in the original language to represent the dew that would be on the grass. In the morning, when you go out real early, the grass often has a heavy dew on it. About noon, where's that grass at? About two o'clock, or where's that dew at? About two o'clock, what's happened? It's gone. Like, like the dew on the ground before you know it, it's evaporated and gone. Friend, that's what our time on this earth is like. And so we want to realize our life is just a vape. I've got a limited amount of time and I want to use it to God's glory. Psalm 90 verses 10 through 12 says I've got 70, maybe 80 years on this earth if I'm lucky. Man who's born of woman is a few days and full of trouble, the Bible says. And so we want to make sure we're giving God the honor and the glory with our time that we can. You know, think about this with me. If I let all my time be about work or I let all my time be consumed with other things, and friend, you can get down, uh, you, you, you can very easily get caught up in other things. How easily have you noticed that you get caught up in a TV program or something comes up on the internet and before you know it, it's been 30 minutes, 45 minutes, or an hour. If we're not careful, things can consume our time so much that the home, as far as time goes, is on the back burner. Our families, our spouses, our children, giving God the honor He deserves, our time needs to be ordered around those kind of things. And then, my friend, I want us to think about another challenge that the home is facing, and this is such a serious challenge. Our homes today need a serious priority check to make sure we're putting first things first. I want to ask you this. What's the priorities in your life right now? Well, we all probably have bills to pay. We all probably have jobs that we've got to go to. We all probably have some chores that we've got to do. But, you know, sometimes I just need to stop in the home and I think about, I need to think about what are the real priorities, what really matters in this life? I want to ask you to think about with me the most valuable thing that you have in the home. Open your Bible, if you would, to Mark chapter 8. As we think about a serious priority check, I want to ask you to open your Bible to Mark chapter 8. And in our homes, let's think about what the most valuable thing in the home is. Look in Mark chapter 8, and I want you to see what our Lord said in verses 36 and 37. Jesus said this, for what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? Or what will a man give in exchange for his soul? My soul, the soul of, of our spouses, the souls of our children, one day, we're going to leave this life and we're going to spend eternity somewhere forever. Friend, I've got to make sure that our soul and living right with God is priority number one. Paying the bills, that might be important. Um, taking care of things in the home that we got, those things are no doubt important. But what's priority number one? Making sure that in the home, the soul is the main priority. Paul would say this in Philippians 1 verse 21, For to me, to live is Christ, and to die is gain. Friend, that was Paul's priority. Paul, Paul knew that one day he was going to die and that would benefit him, but what really mattered was living for Christ. In the home, do we have the soul as our number one priority? Is living for Jesus every day 
the main priority in the home? Let me ask you, is this your priority? Matthew 6, Jesus taught us what first things were, right? Seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Friend, do we have putting God's kingdom first in our home? You see, the Bible says again in Psalm 127, verses 1 through 3, Unless the Lord builds the house, they labor in vain who build it. If God's not at the center of everything we do in the home, friend, the home is failing miserably. We've got to make sure God is in the middle and that everything comes from Him. He's the center of everything we do. Then I want you to think about this challenge for the home with me. There are so many Christian families that find themselves in the home being spread way too thin. And friend, please don't misunderstand what I'm saying here. Ought we to have fun and have a good, should we have fun and have a good time in this life? Friend, there's no doubt. There's absolutely nothing wrong with having fun. But I want you to think about this. I know families and you know families as well. They don't hardly have time to breathe in the home, especially when you've got two or three kids. Every kid's playing a different sport, and you get home from work, and you've got to go to three different ball practices. You've got all these things you've got to do. You don't hardly have time to breathe some days it feels like. Well, sometimes we need to ask ourselves, am I spread so thin that I really can't focus on the things I need to focus on? Think about this with me. We've got to slow down and we've got to think about what really matters. Luke chapter 10. Often think about the story of Mary and Martha. In Luke chapter 10, verses 40 through 42, uh, Jesus is, comes to Mary and Martha's house, and, and of course they're, they're, they're gr glad to have him there. They want to be gracious hosts, and so Martha, she's busy getting things ready. She wants to be a good host, clean things up, provide something for Jesus to eat and drink, and naturally that'd be a good thing to do, but she realizes that Mary's not doing that. And so Martha comes to Jesus and she says, Master, tell my sister, in essence, to get in here and help me. And Jesus said, Martha, Martha, you're troubled and worried about many things, but one thing is needful, and Mary's chosen that good part which should not be taken away from her. She wanted to sit at the feet of Jesus and hear Him speak when her sister thought she ought to be up busy serving, and yet she chose the first thing of most importance. Friend, that's the idea that we're trying to stress. I know we're all busy in the home. I know we all have things we need to do. But our encouragement today, and it's such a challenge as this, don't get spread so thin in the home that you lose sight of what really matters. Focus on the family. Keep our eyes on the goal of going to heaven. And let's make sure that we're giving time and attention to God and bringing honor and glory to His name. Then, my friend, there is another very serious challenge that's facing our homes, and it's this. Sometimes, if we're not careful, we can let our focus be on the almighty dollar. And that's such a challenge. I understand, like you, you've got to have money to live, right? You've got to go to a job. You've got to work. You've got to pay the bills. And, and if a man won't work, neither shall he eat. The Bible teaches those things are necessary and part of living a godly life and being a godly home. But if we get caught up in chasing the almighty dollar to the point that that's all we do, friend, we've missed out. Let me illustrate that from the Scripture. Two passages, two people and two passages that I think of where people kind of let that be their focus. And they both, both lost out in a big way. Luke chapter 12, verses 15 through 21. There was a businessman who had a great year that year. He said to his soul, So you've got many goods laid up for many years. Uh, take it easy. Eat, drink, and be merry, he basically said. He, he had such a great crop year that he tore down his barns, built bigger barns. Uh, he's just living the good life, as it were. He's doing all these things and, and chasing all these business adventures. But then he hears these words. God said to that man, You fool. This night 
will your soul be required of you? Then whose things will those be whom you've acquired? And Jesus said, and so is he who is rich, but not in godliness. That man got so caught up in his blessings physically, in his business ventures, in everything he's doing, that he left out the most important thing, making sure he was right with God. And then I think about this man. Mark chapter 10, verses 17 through 22. Man came to Jesus. Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus told him, uh, keep the commandments. Do not murder, do not steal, do not commit adultery. Uh, all these things I've done from my childhood. And Jesus said to that man, one thing you lack. Sell what you have, give to the poor, come follow me, you'll have treasures in heaven. You know what the next verse says? That man went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. Jesus looked at that man, he loved him, and yet that man walked away from Jesus because he let his, his possessions and his stuff and his value of the dollar be greater value than the Lord Jesus Christ. Friend, our encouragement today is this. Don't let chasing the almighty dollar become priority number one. Let's make sure that we're putting first things first in the kingdom. Then let's consider these challenges. What are some other challenges that the home is facing today? Friend, impurity and immorality is a challenge every home has to guard itself against. Matthew 5, verse 28, Jesus said, He who looks at a woman to lust after her, he's already committed adultery with her. In essence, spiritually speaking, in the mind, he's already committed adultery with her in his mind or his heart. Paul said to Timothy in 1 Timothy 5, verse 22, Flee youthful lust. 1 Peter 1, verse 15, we're told to be holy as he who called you is holy. And yet in the home, whether it be via the phone, whether it be flyers in the mail, whether it be television, internet, whatever it may be, impurity and immorality is trying to get into our homes, it seems like, in every facet and avenue today. Parents, you've got to guard the home against impurity and immorality. You've got to guard your marriage against impurity, immorality, and you've got to make sure that your children are living pure, holy, undefiled lives in every way. Let's consider this also. Here's a challenge that the home is indeed facing, one of the greatest challenges, especially, you know, we think to ourselves, the challenge is we've got to make sure we keep the lines of communication open in the home. And we think to ourselves, we are such an advanced society. We are so advanced in communication. We have all these tools and all these devices and, and everything that's going to help us communicate better. And in reality, sometimes we don't know how to communicate at all. We've got to realize, talking, sitting down, listening to each other, looking each other in the eyes and communicating verbally and seeing our emotions and our expressions. Friend, keeping the lines of communication open is so important in the home today. You see, God communicated with us, right? God gave us His inspired will. He openly and freely communicated with each one of us. We communicate with God through prayer. Uh, when we pray, we approach the throne of God and in the home and in the marriage and in the family, we've got to listen to each other. We've got to talk. We've got to make sure that we understand where each other are and, and keep those, when we stop talking, we failed in the home. I'm not talking about texting. I'm not talking about sending an email. I'm not talking about sending an emoji to tell somebody how you... I'm talking about real communication. Sitting down, listening to each other, talking, and, and being a family. That is such a challenge in the world we live today. But you know, another great problem that the home, and especially the marriage, a great challenge the marriage faces today is divorce. Friend, we live in a day and age where you've seen it as well as I have. You can see advertisements and you can see billboards. Divorce, $299, no strings. You know, it's just as though it's so easy to sever the home and the marriage relationship today. 
And friend, I promise you, that's not what God wants. What does God want? Romans 7, verses 1 through 4. God's intent for the marriage is to be until death does it part. It is to last for a lifetime. Genesis 2, verse 24. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother, be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. That's to last for a lifetime. Did Jesus say in Matthew 19, 9 that there was an exception to that for fornication? A person could, the, the innocent party could divorce? Well, well, sure he did. But even then, shouldn't we strive to make it work? Shouldn't we think about everybody's soul in the home and making sure we do everything possible we can to help one another? Our homes today, our country is plagued with divorce problems. In the home, we need people who will say, until death do us part, and who really mean it. And so, friend, we're so glad today that you've joined us for our series of lessons on godly homes in an ungodly world. These next few lessons, we're going to do our best from the Word of God in every facet of the home to offer help and hope and encouragement so that our homes can truly bring honor and glory to God. But friend, as always, if homes are going to honor God, it begins by having Christian homes, Christians in the home. If you're not a child of God, we always want to extend that invitation, the Lord's invitation for you to become a Christian. Have you heard the message that Jesus is the Son of God? Do you believe He's the Savior of the world? John 8 verse 24. Would you turn from a life of sin and turn to God in repentance? Luke 13 verse 3. Would you confess His name before men? Romans 10 verse number 10. And have every sin washed away? Would you be immersed in water? For the forgiveness of your sins, Acts 2, verse 38. And so today, let's heed the encouragement of God for our homes to be godly homes, and we hope you'll join us next time as we're going to think more about godly homes in an ungodly world. You may have just joined our program and are wondering, what is the Gospel of Christ? The Gospel of Christ is an evangelistic work of the Churches of Christ that reaches the whole world with the Gospel through TV, streaming, free media, and Internet. Our motto is truly to take the whole Gospel to the whole world. We believe in having a book, chapter, and verse for everything we say and do. And unlike many religious groups today, we're concerned about lost souls, not your wallet. This is the Gospel of Christ. Visit thegospelofchrist.com for a host of Bible study materials, including audio and video of our lessons. Request your copy of today's lesson by completing a media request form online. On-demand downloads are also available at thegospelofchrist.com. We would love to hear from you. Email us at mail at thegospelofchrist.com or call. 844-6-GOSPEL. You may also write us at the address on your screen. Search your app store for The Gospel of Christ to access our mobile app on your this smartphone. Is the